if I had known in 2009 that market will become 18,000 from whatever it was in 2008, probably right. I would be sitting on a trillion dollar pile by now. <laughs> okay, markets do not value present; they always value future. We have been sold a story that India is a consumption story because of its sheer size of population. That is one part. The second part is this. Where all over the world there is a pessimism of recession, high inflation, and something, India has done relatively much, much better. Hello and welcome. I'm Abhishek Singh, and you're watching the Mint. Indian markets reclaimed the world's fifth largest stock market tag. India had lost the tag to France in January this year. With an addition of three hundred thirty billion dollars to the market cap, the total market capitalization of the Indian stock market. Has breached the 3.3 trillion dollar mark. This is particularly special as it's happening while the global economy in general is going through a slowdown. So, what led to India's re-entry into the top five? To talk about it, I'm joined by J.N. Gupta, former SEBI Executive Director and Managing Director, Stakeholders Empowerment Services. Welcome, welcome to the show, Mr. Gupta. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Abhishek. So as I mentioned earlier, India is back in top five, and as somebody who was the executive director of market regulator SEBI uh, roughly a decade and a half ago, did you think in those days when the market had just come out of a crisis in two thousand eight that the markets will multiply more than six times from less than twenty seven hundred something in two thousand nine to eighty eighteen thousand five hundred plus now? What will you say about this incredible growth India's stock market has seen in the last one decade, sir? Uh, I tell you very simply, if I had known in two thousand nine that market will become eighteen thousand from whatever it was in two thousand eight, probably right. I would be sitting on a trillion dollar pile by now. Okay, <laughs> yes. so it is it is extremely difficult and almost impossible for a person to say what the market will be tomorrow or day after tomorrow. Having said that. First, you have referred to me as a regulator, so I will answer as a regulator first. A regulator will never look into what is the market cap, what is our rank, where it is going. A regulator's first priority will be: Is our market safe? Are the investors safe? Are the disclosures proper and something? So it has the basic thing is the integrity of the market, where it is in terms of ranking. It is regulators maybe. Into A to Z list, probably in the Z list, it will not come anywhere. Right. Coming back to the story that why the markets are this. Again, I say that if I know that what will be the market tomorrow, probably I will take a position and earn money. So that is a different thing. Nobody knows what will be the market behavior, but one can always analyze that why it is happening. So it is happening for a couple of reasons, and the first reason is something we have been sold. A story that India is a consumption story because of its sheer size of population. That is one part. The second part is this: where all over the world there is a pessimism of recession, high inflation, and something, India has done relatively much, much better. Now, in a global economy, relative performance is almost absolute performance because when investors find that. Person A or country A is doing better than country B. They come to country A because it's a relatively they 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 the capital moves where there is much better return. If you have seen in last three four months, FII have invested heavily in Indian market. That is second. Third part, which is there and which is again, it we when you read the stories and when you read interviews of the entrepreneurs, it is China plus one is strategy. Is making a lot of impact as far as Indian companies are concerned. Top with that, if you have seen the recent results, they have been decent enough, giving in taking into account worldwide problems so that exports have been impacted, the overseas operations have been impacted, but still the results are very decent, which gives a hope. And one more thing I would say that is the most important. Markets do not value present; they always value future. So, if they feel that the future, one year down the line, two year down the line, three year down the line, 
is much better than what is today and what was yesterday, the market will give a premium to the current earnings. Right. Talking about the future in that case, because you said markets really function based on, you know, what the investors are thinking future is going to be like of a particular market. While people are talking about the fact that uh, Indian markets perhaps even uh, cross the uh, one lakh mark. I mean, do you think that that kind of growth is possible in uh, such a short span of time? Again, again, I said that I cannot speak what will be the index tomorrow or day after. But I have also read a report released by Jeffrey a couple of days back. We right. said that by 2030, the Sensex can touch one lakh mark, which is from 63,000 today to another 50% journey. Right. It is possible. It is very much possible. It may not. But everything will depend how the Indian economy does. So Jeffries are make, making their statement based on what they perceive the growth of the Indian market today. Now, there are always so many slip between the cup and lip or it may overperform. It may touch 1 lakh much before, depending upon how the growth pans out and how the political environment in the country plays. That is the most, because in India, the only negative that comes in any business is the political hurdles. Right. So a stable government, if that remains in place, uh, and the economy continues to grow at the pace that it is growing and perhaps sort of, you know, even exceeds the current pace of growth, then that number, that figure is not unachievable. All right. And what do you think? I mean, in terms of you were talking about the fact that it depends on how the economy is doing. Uh, what would your assessment be of the Indian economy at this point in time? So what we are seeing that inflation is coming down. It is within the manageable limit. And if the monsoons are good, then it will certainly continue its downward trajectory. That is point one. The second thing is that the, if the business environment continues to be positive, that is second. And third, if the China plus policy is really successful, and if we get a good share of that pile of export that moves out of China or production out of China to India, and as we have already seen, Apple, etc. are coming here, or Tesla is trying to come here. So that may really give a boost to Indian thing. Only thing is this, that we have to start thinking business as separate from the politics. Because business will continue, because business will make take care of the population because of the jobs and GDP. The politicians, the political party, the government may come and go. So business should not be seen as adversary to the government. Business is always contributing to the success of government, be it any government. Because if the business stops, there will be no taxes, there will be no employment, what political parties will deliver to the people. So political parties have to ensure that environment in the country is towards business, that is it. And the last point is this, if the interest rate starts coming down, it will again give a little bit boost to the GDP. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for talking to us, uh, Mr. Gupta. Mm -hmm.